Okay everyone, so now in this next lesson, I want to talk about the CSS Layout Display property. Now let's go create another file here and let's name this display.html. And inside of that, let's create an HTML5 layout for our document here. Now let's go and rename the title here, display property inline inline block and block. I just want to go and explain here how this is properly used, the three values that we have here for the display property. So let's have display property and then let's have three section multiplied by three. Now inside of each of the sections, I would want to go and put a UL element so let's go and create UL elements inside of them. Now let me just go and format the document here. Now inside of the list UL here, I would want to go and create at least three lists. So let's go and multiply it by three. So we now have three lists inside of each of the UL element. You would see that in this exercise, I'm, ma I'm maximizing the Alt key and I'm selecting each of the elements here from where I actually want to go and put similar contents. This is the beauty of Visual Studio Code. You would see that it's a lot easier to work, especially if you're adding some additional content and you can just maximize the use of the feature here from where you just need to press on the Alt key and select certain spaces here that you would want to include same content. So now let me just go and add one last here. And usually these are some of the basic information that you would see in a navigation. So let's just go and open our document here and see what will it look like in our project already. So we have three navigations that will have specific display property set to inline, inline block, and block. Now let's go add some headers here so at least it will comply with our... our validator so let's have h2 in each of the elements and then navigation text here now let's give specific values here inline inline block and lastly here navigation block let's save that now let's go and refresh this so we have some headings here. Now the next thing that I want to do here is to give some IDs to our ULs here. So let's go and do that. Where's the last one? And then put an ID of nav. Let's save. Now I want to give this specific modifiers. So let's have nav1, nav2, and nav3. Let's save. Now inside of the head element, I want to go and use the style tag here and then select the ID nav1. And then inside of that, let's change the background color to red. Let's save that and refresh. Now let's go and create some additional IDs here and replace this with 2 and 3. Let's save that. Now let's change the color of this to green and this one will be blue. Let's save, refresh. The next thing that I want to do here is to go to our to-do list.html and copy the body declaration styling that we've applied there and copy it here inside of our display.html. Now let's save that and then refresh. Now let's go format this document. Now the next thing that I want to do here is to give this a margin of 0 and padding of 0. Now let's go and refresh this. As you can see here, we have a margin of 20 pixels on our body element and a padding of 0. That's why we don't have any space inside of our UL element. If you remember, we can remove the list style type 
style type of an unordered list by giving it a value of none. Let's refresh. Now let's go to our li element here for nav1 and give it a class name of inline. Now what I want to do here is to go to our style sheet and then create the class here and give it a value of display inline. Let's save that and let's refresh. You would see now that our navigation here for the navigation inline is now in a horizontal line. And this will be displaying our list here as an inline element. And a keynote to remember here is that any height or width properties will have no effect once we declare it inside of the inline element. So let's say I give it a padding of 20 pixels. Let's see what will happen. You would see that it only gave padding from the left side and the right side, but it did not increase the height and the width of our element. Now if I try to give this a height of 20 pixels, let's see what will happen you would see nothing's happening on our browser. You would also see a yellow marker here saying that the property is ignored due to the display with display inline value. So let's try to take note of that, that this will not be allowing us to apply any height or width properties. Now let's try to go and copy this inside of our second navigation. Let's save that and refresh. Now I want to go to our LIs here inside of our second navigation and give it a class name of inline block. Now let's go back to our style sheet here and then let's reference the inline block class name and then let's go and copy the values here. The only difference will be this will be given an inline block value. Now let's save this and then refresh this here. As you can see here, we have padding and at the same time, it has height and width values. If I try to go and remove the padding here, let's see what will happen. Save and refresh. We can see that it has the same initial value when we had no padding in our inline navigation, right? But if we go and add a padding here, 20 pixels and height of, let's say height of 20 pixels, let's save that and refresh. You would see here that the inline block is allowing values for height, unlike here that when we gave it a padding of 20 pixels, it only gave padding from the left and right. And again, if we go and try to give a height here of 50 pixels, nothing will happen. Okay, so I'm hoping that that's quite clear with the difference between the inline block and the inline property here. So just remember the inline block that we have here will be allowing us to set a width and height on the element. Also try to take note that the inline block will be respecting the top bottom margins or paddings while the inline display property here will not. Now for the last property declaration value here that we have here, which is the navigation block, this is actually the default value. Default value. If we try to open our developer tools, you would see that inside of our developer tools here, layout, it shows us the display property for the UL has a display value of block as its default value. So a keynote to remember here is that the difference between the inline block and the navigation block here or the display value block is that the inline block does not add a line break after the element. So we can see here it's showing us a vertical flow of our content and that the element is displayed as a block element. 
and we can also see that it starts on a new line and takes up the whole width of the element as we can see here. I'm really hoping that you got the idea on how to maximize the use of the inline, inline block, and the block property declarations or values for the display property and you will be able to maximize and use it in your future projects.